Hey everybody, Eric here. Today, I wanna to share with you a quick and easy way to add annotations or markups directly into your SketchUp model. Okay, so the first question to ask ourselves is why might we need to add markups straight into SketchUp? And I think the obvious answer is that we can always do a screen capture we can always then mark it up and then send something as a 2D JPEG. But like everything, SketchUp's ability to retain information in 3D, to be able to rotate around, use scenes, that's going to be really helpful because imagine working collaboratively where we have multiple people and you need to say to somebody, hey, this needs to go here. Now, you might not be the one making that change or you might not want to make that change, but you can make that suggestion. And it's really cool to be able to go into model, make a markup, and then let the designer or the modeler make those changes that you want to see, and then also be able to track them, again, right there in your model. So I'm going to show you how to do that using a new feature in 2023 uh, called Overlays. So let's go ahead and just get to it. So I've got my model here. You might recognize this. If you took our campus course on commercial interiors, then you've probably seen this, hopefully built this yourself. Um, in this case, I'm just using it as an example. Let's pretend like this model is ready to be reviewed by our design team. So that's what I want to do here. I want to just say, okay, take a review. Let me know your thoughts. Don't make the changes yet. Just mark it up. And then as the designer, I'll go in and make those changes myself. So first thing I want to do is explain a little bit of information about overlays. If you don't know what they are, it's a little bit technical because it's meant for the developers, actually. It's part of the back end. So I'm going to click over here on Window overlays. Again, this is new to 2023. So if you're using an older version, you're not going to get this. So now that I've got this overlays panel here, you can see what it does is it tells you which extensions use overlays. So in a way, overlays are native to SketchUp. But what they're doing is they're allowing you to add information to extensions. So it's like, it's like being able to run the extension and be able to display information while you're modeling. So it's kind of like expanding the capabilities of what we're already doing. So there's a little bit more information to say about how and why and some of the advantages of working with overlays, but that's not the core point. That's just kind of the information I want to kind of explain because really what we want to do is annotate our model. If you're not sure where to get these uh, extensions that use overlays, you can click Discover More. I'm going to close that. I don't need that. And right now there's only a few out, but I can see this being used more and more as developers really understand the potential to be able to display more information while you're modeling so that therefore you're just you know you're expanding again the capabilities of what we're already doing so i'm treating this as kind of a native sketchup tool rather than an extension because a little bit like if you come up over here to tool palettes we've got solid tools a lot of people don't think of those as sort of your core tools because they're not in the main toolbar uh, sometimes people think uh, sandbox kind of functions a little bit like an extension right but it kind of free floats in its own little world. Well, that's the way I'm kind of treating annotations. So once you've installed the annotations extension, you can come up over here to draw. And then under annotations, we've got two kinds of annotations to choose from. We can do model annotations, which put the line work or the feedback right in the model, or we can do screen annotations. And I'll show you the difference between them. Let's start with model annotations. If I wanted to draw something, let me just kind of pan around. I'll try not to get stuck in a wall or a column, but I'm just going to kind of pan around. And let's just say, for example, this pool table, it needs to shift over for some reason. I mean, it's perfectly centered, but maybe what we need to do, or maybe the tile on the ground needs to edit. So what we want to do is come over here and make an annotation. I'm just going to draw with my mouse, and I'm just going to kind of draw that area. And I say, this tile, you know, we've got to get rid of this tile. We actually need to bring this wood over here. So we're going to lose that tile and we're going to replace that with wood. Now, the cool thing here is if I rotate around, you can see what happened. It's kind of like a visual trick. It looked like I drew straight across, but what it did is it the annotation recognizes the geometry and it goes up and over it. Now, I can't select the annotation itself. The annotation is an overlay, so it's just being displayed. It's not actually creating any geometry in the model. It's not going to make your model heavy or anything like that. But here's the, 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 the thing. If I come back over here to perspective, my perspective that I started at, you can see that that annotation that I drew was keyed to a scene. 
So it doesn't really make sense to view it from over here. What I might want to do instead is come over here first. So before I draw the annotation, so before I make the annotation, um, actually, I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to just clear those annotations, erase annotations. So I'm just going to clear those out. Depending on how many I have, I can erase them one at a time here. I'm having trouble getting that one, but that's OK. Just zoom in, fix that. So in this case, what I would want to do is probably set up a scene first. And maybe that's going to be called something like markup or annotations or whatever you want to call it. Comments, doesn't matter. So now when I draw annotations, model annotations. So now if I was to sit there and say, no, that needs to go away. I'm going to cut that out. That's gone. Um, I want to make sure that that's replaced with wood. So now if I come over here and I pop back to my previous scene, it disappears. Those annotations aren't there anymore. So when I come into my markup scene, there they are. And the nice thing about that is that because of that perspective, it's actually really important that you tie it to a scene. You don't have to, but it kind of works that way. The other thing, reason why you want to mark up a scene, a separate scene, rather than doing it on its own, is because in this case, you saw me when I wanted to do it again. I went to up here to draw annotations, erase, but it doesn't erase all of them. It lets you choose which ones you want to erase. So in that case, I can erase the whole boundary. I'm going to undo that. If I wanted to get rid of, if I had a bunch of annotations, I could actually come over here and just delete the scene. So if I delete that scene, click yes, I want to get rid of that. What it's going to do is it's going to get rid of that scene. And then therefore, all the annotations with it are gone. So let me show you the one more. This is a pretty simple extension. So I mean, that's pretty much most of it. But there's one more option you can do, which is called screen annotations. So you know the way that I just did that, um, did it on the floor and over the pool table, and it kind of went up and over the pool table like that because it's actually drawing on the geometry. In this case, if I wanted to do something like, like I'll just do it from here instead of creating a new scene. If I want to do something like that, and then I say, no, we got to get rid of the pool table. Unfortunately, it's not in our budget. We want to get rid of this tile. We're not going to need that anymore, and we want to put this wood over here. Now, when I rotate in this case, watch what happens this time. If I zoom in and rotate, you can see that I've lost uh, the, it's no longer tied to the geometry. It's actually tied to the screen, so it floats. Now, that works almost better for like if you're doing callouts, if you wanted to put something like a note that floats, in which case it's actually kind of independent of the geometry. So you can use these two together. If I go back to my perspective lounge, there it is. Now, I didn't create a new scene, so now it's tied to this scene. So I can either delete this scene or I can go in and erase them manually. I'm just going to go ahead and come back over here. Since I didn't create a new scene, I'm just going to erase those annotations. Don't really need those. I was just for this demo here. And that last one. There we go. Now we're back. So that was pretty quick, a pretty quick um, kind of an overview of not just overlays, like kind of what an overlay is and how it works and why it's unique to 2023, right? Because that this actually technology came from the iPad app. Some people probably are thinking, well, you know, that's cool that you've got an iPad app, but I'm a desktop user. But the, now that we have the two of those, when we learn something, when something works really well on the iPad, we can actually take that feedback. We can take those tools and incorporate them. That's what's happening here. It started as an iPad uh, drawing tool because you're using the pen and you're able to draw right on the screen. And we said, hey, this is really useful. Actually, we're going to bring that in in 2023 into the, the desktop, uh, the pro or desktop version of the app. So that's pretty cool that there's this feedback loop now that the two of them are actually getting tighter and tighter, more integrated. So whether you use the iPad app and you do it that way, or whether you're doing it on the desktop app, now you don't need to do a screenshot and go to something like Photoshop. You can just make your annotations right there in the model, share those with other people, get those changes and that feedback incorporated, and you know, keep going with your design. So I want to say that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, subscribe, comment, and like. And I'll say comment twice because I read these comments below. Um, I'll interact with you. I'll respond to you. Have you used this feature? Uh, do you use it in your firm or personal work? Let me know. Give it, I learn from you guys as much as I want to uh, pass my knowledge on. I want to learn also from people who actually do use this feature day to day. If you haven't, give it a try. It's super easy. It's super fun to play with. And, you know, we'll go from there. So I'll say thanks there and see you next time.